Let's discuss this a little more with CTV News political commentator Scott Reed. Scott, good to have you with us. Good morning. Good morning. You know, you've watched a lot of political stories play out over the years. I have to ask you right off the bat, did this one catch you off guard? Uh, off guard? Holy smokes. I felt like I'd been sprung out of a cannon. Uh, it was astonishing. And it's not um, just the nature of the announcement, the suddenness of the announcement. It's that it's so completely at, at odds with what people know publicly and privately of John Tory. Um, you know, he came into office really as a symbol of stability in the uh, contrast with the you know, controversy and scandals and mayhem of the Ford years. Um, and this simply uh, was not the sort of controversy that you would have ever expected to associate with John Tory. So, yeah, uh, I was caught, caught off quite guard. And I know them here. I know them well. Mm-hmm. I've worked with them. So it's just not something that, um, that I would have imagined, ever imagined. So, Scott, the timing of this, too, a lot of people, you know, observing how quickly this all unfolded last night and how, how fast it all happened. What kind of political calculus do you suppose would have gone into making that decision late on a Friday night, con- considering that what what John Tory was talking about was, was sort of in the recent past? Well, look, there are some who will say, why didn't he soldier on? He could have answered these questions. I mean, they're both of age. Yes, there's a power imbalance. Uh, she works for him or worked for him. But that's not who John Tory is. Uh, he didn't want to face uh, that pounding. I, I think when he said that he didn't want to put the city through that trauma, that he'd rather focus on um, maintaining some measure of privacy for himself and for his family and try to repair those relationships. I, the John Tory I know was talking clearly and sincerely there. So mm-hmm. I think all of that is the reality that guided his decision. Once he became aware that the story was going to break, I think that he had to make very difficult decisions very quickly, and he did. And I think he decided that if he didn't want the public spotlight to be uh, pointed at him in his personal life and uh, going into every corner of uh, his family, uh, then the only thing to do was to step aside. Well, now that the decision has been made, Scott, how is the office of the mayor impacted? You know, the mayor, of course, being the person whose whose job it really is to to build consensus around a council table, and in a, in Toronto's case, a very large table with with a lot of big ticket issues. Well, this is where the true turbulence uh, starts. I mean, look, there were no good choices. If the mayor had chosen to soldier on, it would have been a time of enormous disruption and controversy. But his departure means that the deputy mayor will have to step into the breach. That means that it will now fall on her shoulders, along with the city manager, to try to guide the budget process. There's a very contentious budget process unfolding in the city, demands on the city, far outstrip resources, choices, trade-offs, very difficult political policy decisions, decisions that will affect the lives of people. And all of that now is going to have to be forged. That consensus will be have to shape without the power of the incumbent mayor. And that so that's one big change. And of course, what's also going to happen, and it's happening already, I can tell you I've heard from people, folks are going to run for mayor. Uh, this thing could move pretty quickly. We could easily have a special election, you know, in, in the spring. Mm-hmm. And so... Folks will start to jockey. So a difficult budget process, a difficult set of issues confronting City Hall will now be compounded by the fact that some of those around the council table will be jockeying for electoral position. And that's just going to make the politics 100 times harder. Scott, just before we let you go, I just wonder how quickly you see a by-election happening. Well, the rules are reasonably clear. Once there's a vacancy officially declared, then you have about 60 days to call the by-election. There could be up to 90 days, 45 to 90 days for that race. I I don't know with certainty. The buzz I'm hearing is as early as May, maybe as late as uh, early summer, but it won't be forever. And nobody wants to go through the kinds of choices and decisions that must be made in this city uh, without a strong uh, a mayor in place. So I think it'll be pretty quick. My guess would be May if you had to had to put 100 bucks down. Okay, well, lots to watch in the months to come. Scott Reed, CTV News political commentator. We appreciate you joining us this morning. Thanks, Scott.